Okay, I got both axles removed. The oil's been drained. And there's no seal. So that's how I'm going to be taking all these readings. I've got this thing locked down. It seems to turn way too easily, even though our original mark is almost a quarter turn past where it was originally. So you'd think this would be kind of hard to turn, but, and then here's my contraption for this. I don't know if this is really right or not, but, and it's kind of hard because what, I got to kind of hold this up in place, but not modify the, you know, not jack with the reading I'm getting. And this thing's maybe two inch pounds to turn. So, uh, <laughs> I guess. I'm going to take it back apart and reduce the shim thickness by two thousandths and uh, see what it is then. Alright, now this time we're doing a 10, a 12, and a 16 for a total of 38 thousandths. That's those. Put the bearing in there. All right, before I go all the way with this, I want to make sure that we're still spinning smoothly. That's harder. That's harder to spin. Not quite locking up yet. Not that we want that. Another thing I may have forgotten to mention is that you're supposed to turn this thing around a few times. Just to make sure that bearing is seated properly, I guess. Alright. Let's see what I get this time. It's really hard to tell. I don't even know if I'm doing this right. Not even 10. It looks like it's 5 inch pounds. I don't really know what to do now. Take it down another 2 thousandths. Seems like it's harder to turn than that. Alright, I guess I'll try taking it down by another two thousandths. What choice do I have? Rotational torque trumps all. Okay. 16 and 20 for a total of 36 thousandths. And it looks like we're maybe almost a quarter turn past the original. Alright, let's see if inch pounds tell us anything this time. I think we're at 10. We're getting there. At least I'm getting some kind of reading now. I don't even know, can you see that? Probably not. No. Let's see if you can see that. It's about 10 now, so I don't know. I guess uh guess I'll keep going. But instead of continuing to show this, uh, I think I'm just going to get where I'm going and then I'll show you the final inch-pound reading. So I want to discuss real quick how you actually take these readings when you're using this uh, beam type torque wrench with this thing. At first when you start turning, it seems like you get kind of a high reading and uh, that's just kind of overcoming the initial friction of, of getting the thing going. And then if you push kind of slow, 
it seems like the internal friction of all the components kind of makes it give you a artificially high reading but then on the other hand if you push too fast then everything on the inside kind of gets some momentum going and then your reading ends up being uh, a false low like a, a, a too low of a reading so you kind of have to just hit it right on so So that was a thirty thousandths. I think I need to go ahead and add the two back in. So that's with thirty two thousandths. Looked like it was about fifteen to eighteen. I think I'm gonna go with that. So alright. Time to take this all apart, put the seal in and uh, try to get this yoke installed without messing the seal up. Okay, this time for installing the seal, I think I'm going to try this Kent Moore tool that I had. J36010. Seems to fit the outside diameter well enough and it slips over the pinion, so I, you know, why not use at least a more correct tool for the job. So, we've got 32 thousandths worth of shims in there, we got the bearing in place, when we checked rotational torque it was about 18 to 20 inch pounds, which is perfect. So I think we're ready to go ahead and install the seal and then the yoke. This is working perfectly. I'm just going to give this a little bit of fresh oil here and hope it hopefully help it slip into the seal better. So I'm still not sure why I messed the seal up last time but I think part of it is that I loaded a bunch of that PTFE into the splines and so it wouldn't go in and out very easily. So I think this time what I'm going to do so make sure I get this thing in the seal real good. I think I'll be able to, you know, I should be able to look up in there and make sure it's in the seal good before it's covered by this flange, before I actually drive it home. And then when I've actually got it in place, I'm going to douse it with brake clean and then put a little bead of some silicone around the bottom edge before I put the nut on. And I might even try to get some red Loctite on these threads, just in case. It's a brand new nut, so I probably don't need that, but... Uh, you know, a little bit of extra insurance couldn't hurt. So, alright. So, I don't know if you can see up in there, but the, it's I'm trying to get it inside that lip. You can see, it's it's right there, it's so close. But I think this is the point last time where I messed it up. So as long as I can get that lip to not fold in on itself, I think I'll be good. So I want to keep working on that. And once I've got it into that point, I'll bring you back over here and show you before we cover it up with this flangey looking thing here. So somehow I did it again. I don't, I don't think it's ruined yet. But you can see how the top was folded under there. Um, I don't know, I thought I was being real careful, but apparently not, so I'm going to have to try to, maybe once I get it in here I'll push down real good and then go in and see if that'll kind of get under that part right there. But yeah, this is a really tight fit and you can't really move the yoke around a whole lot to get it in this seal, so uh, I'm going to keep working at it. I thought that looked weird once it was in, but uh, it's also, it seems like it's a lot harder to move around if it's folded in on itself too, so that might be a clue if you're having trouble with this like I am. So I've checked this thing, I've checked the lip of this seal. I don't know if this is going to show up on camera, but I looked all the way around, around the top with the light and everything, and I'm pretty sure that I have, do not have that lip of that seal folded over now. I can see when I, you can kind of move this thing around still, and when I push it around you can see the lip 
you can see the lips sticking out the front so I'm pretty sure I'm good plus it seems to now see that you can turn it either direction before when the lip was folded in on itself it was really hard to turn it felt like you turn it one direction and it would want to pull in and then the other direction it would want to pull out so uh, I think that's a successfully installed seal and the yoke has been put in there properly so I'm gonna go ahead and install the new nut torque it down to 125 and then I think we can start putting axles drive shaft exhaust I think I might actually finally be done with this Alright, so I've just got some black RTV here. So I'm just going to put a little bead at the base of where those splines are and then tighten the nut down on that bead. And then this probably isn't necessary since I've got a new nut, but I think I'm going to go ahead and do some red Loctite too. A little bit of extra insurance, I guess. All right, so now I'm going to add an ounce of the Type F friction modifier to one quart of this. Pour that all in there and then just top it off. So that should be 1.6 liters of fluid with only one ounce of that. And then I'll see how that does and go to a parking lot, take some tight turns and see if the rear end's clicking. That's the court with the friction modifier in it. Alright, and now just use the second court until it starts coming out the hole. Oh, there it comes. Okay, so that's it. This dirty thing back on here. Okay. Hey. 